And uh, it's a pretty basic lecture on uh, scalability. And, uh, you should fit any kind of language. Uh, it, should, it won't fit with, for people who work with large websites or have a lot of experience. But uh, I guess we can make it more of a dialogue with the input on the Perl, which I would like to have here as well. Uh, okay. So, first, who am I? I'm somebody who can. Okay. Yeah. I I had PHP code, not Perl, so the subject of the talk isn't really fitting here, but we'll try to make it still. I've been developing in uh, mostly PHP for the past <coughs> 10 years, I think. Uh, we've been coding with, with the Perl before that. Uh, what with uh, uh, called Networkize, together with uh, Yaron. And, uh, Yaron, who's in the other room right now? Yaron Sawyer. Yaron Sawyer, yeah. Yaron Sawyer. Yaron Sawyer. That's his name. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's not a secret. Well, of course. <laughs> I just out of you. I just saw well, a little name. It's what um, you So now we all you know that you are who speaks. Yeah. Okay. So what does scalability mean? Scalability means the ability to scale a system or a process uh, in a capable way, in, in an easy way, to take a system which is a small system which is a, in a, of a limited process and make it work with much larger uh, more requests, more uh, uh, more volume than it was capable to be before. When we talk about web scalability, mostly in PHP, we talk about two types of scalability. Uh, one is uh, horizontal scaling and the second is vertical scaling. When we try to make a system scale, we begin with code, optimizing uh, the code, uh, making the code more capable, more uh, scalable in a way. And uh, then we go to the network and uh, to the general infrastructure. <coughs> when we talk about vertical scaling, it means taking the system as it is and growing it uh, vertically, uh, making the same system without any major changes in the infrastructure work faster. We can do it uh, either by uh, making a bit of transaction in code, adding a bit of uh, uh, additional system that will help, like offer caching or uh, additional caching system optimizations for the database. Or we can, uh, at the beginning, make, large, make larger machines, make more optimized machines, uh, for the system. The problem with vertical scaling is that it's limited. You can't uh, upgrade your server forever. At some point you have to add additional servers, add additional machines to the system. Uh, and also scaling up is much more expensive. Like a machine with 2 gigs of RAM is usually more expensive than a machine with, with than two machines with 1 gigs of RAM at some point. So, our next option is horizontal scaling. That means taking one machine, adding another one, adding more machines uh, in the system, adding additional uh, caching server, load balancing, and so on. Basically offloading part of the work to additional, uh, uh, additional infrastructure. Generally that's much less limited because we can uh, put, in, instead of making one machine go, we can make it like, um, 200 machines, 300 machines. We'll continue going to, to a cloud or an outsourced part of our infrastructure. The problem with that is that it requires much more complicated, more and more difficult adjustments to the system, to the code, and to the database. Uh, but first, before we start to scaling uh, or changing hardware, uh, we need to change the document the code. In PHP, we have a couple of different opcode caching systems. <coughs> Maybe uh, APC is the most popular one right now. There are additional ones like Xcache, 
and uh, he accelerates objects. Actually, do it. I'm not sure what this, how optical caching works in parallel. Maybe somebody can know if that whole subject exists. Though, uh, do you know about anything about optical caching? Is opt opcode caching done to uh, so you don't have to compile uh, to get the opcodes again? Well, yeah. Did this for a long time. Yeah. It's uh, long time. what? Well, did it for a long time. It's part of the, the language itself. What's parallel? I mean. But it was parallel and uh, did the uh, code caching for a time. <coughs> is it caching to this? No, it's caching to the memory. Okay. Basically what happens is that each time a PHP is at a data runs, it reads the source code, it Files. compiles, mm -hmm. it handles the request and it finishes the yeah. If you add an opcode cache, basically whatever it compiles, it saves that, puts it in the memory and the next request won't have to compile the code again. But I don't think it's called the upload cache. It's not upload, it's upload. Upload cache. Yeah, it's a. It may not be like Yeah, okay. Like yeah, sure it's called. PHP is uh, like shell mapping. It's like uh, every request, like uh, everything is uh, re initialized. Yeah. Right? And yeah. Perl, if you run fast CGI or mod Perl, then uh, you can cache a lot of initialization and loading. So you get the same thing. In PHP, if you run PHP with fast CGI, it's, it behaves the same way. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, it's, the same uh, PHP process handles multiple requests. So you don't need an opcode cache when you run PHP that way? Uh, you still, you can still <coughs> it because uh, still the interpreter doesn't need to re re recompile the files each time. But, uh, but the benefit is much smaller is if you use fast CGI as opposed to mod PHP or... Okay. Uh, Another thing that, that you should optimize at the beginning is all the heavy database queries should go to a separate cache, such as memcache, or in the case of PHP, you can use APC for that as well. Uh, just upload all the heavy cache, uh, all the heavy queries should be one run multiple times. Uh, another thing that you can do and uh, optimize your, uh, your server application before you switch to different hardware is change your server. Basically, like if you're using Apache, switch to Nginx or, um, or add additional caching instead of web cache, adding the even file cache. Just keep in mind that file system is usually the slowest system you have, the smallest part of the, the system. So you should try to access, especially the right to file systems, as little as possible. Uh, that's a simple uh, sample of code like you know, how to do caching in the memcache. Um, basically, you check in the, in the cache if you have the object already. If you don't have it, you go to and do your query and save it to the, to the cache. The next time, instead of running the query, instead of reading the tables, it will just go to the cache. Uh, into memcache, read it from a certain key, and then the response is much, much quicker. After we have to optimize the single machine we have as much as possible, we begin to change hardware. Basically, we change the, the machine, the next term gets server, they more RAM, separate some of the services. After that, we begin scaling horizontally, or scale out. Uh, so we have one server, we need to add another server, <coughs> we add uh, a load balancer between them, we take the database and put it on a separate server, and uh, even though we had one server and we had two different uh, servers just to handle two requests on two machines, in the long term it's uh, beneficial because the load balancer needs to add it only once for the <coughs> amount of uh, the backend machines. So, it's an additional uh, load, it's an additional investment that uh, you don't have to do every time you go. Um, another thing that you usually want to do is output all your static assets, all your uh, CSS and JavaScript and uh, flash file and uh, all these things that don't change around in dynamic. Take them on your main server, uh, don't, don't turn them to Apache, don't make them uh, don't make Apache work hard for it. Either put a separate machine with varnish or some other caching 
sell it in, in front of it or move it to a CDN. That, that can, uh, CDN. Hmm? What is a CDN? CDN is a content delivery network. It's a, it's like Akamai? Usually, like Akamai, yeah. Akamai, okay. like level 3. If, if you're on uh, Amazon infrastructure, you have cloud phones, which is their own server. Okay. It's basically a network of servers that are distributed all over the world that optimize the delivery of uh, static content to the clients. So if the request comes from Europe and uh, you have a CDN server, your, your uh, main server in the, in the United States, all this, the, the mirrors of the CDN server, all the nodes will synchronize to your main server and uh, the request from Europe will come to the closest node and you will get it faster and you will get it from a local cache <coughs> that's going to the servers and basically using your load. Um, another thing that you can uh, do with the CDN is uh, prefetch objects, like make some kind of a cron job that will put things into the cache at the into the CDN during the load time of your, of your traffic and uh, so it will be available during the higher, during the, the, the heavier traffic. Uh, actually that's a good idea in general, like if you have any uh, heavy queries or any heavy pages you can uh, prefer them beforehand during times of lower traffic and uh, uh, output them. Uh, a lot of uh, websites which, which, that have more static content usually just generate static pages, put them to, to HTML, to CDN as HTML, and uh, <coughs> jump down on, each, on every request and just use uh, dynamics and request for statistics or stuff like that, and not, uh, not for the generation of the content itself. Which for larger sites, uh, it's uh, very efficient. Uh, today, most of the larger sites, like um, if you take the top 50, I think almost all of them are PHP with LAMP, with the uh, MemphisD uh, usually, and some kind of CDN. Uh, a good example of the CDN is uh, Wikipedia, which has their own network of separate nodes in uh, different countries, and they built their own CDN instead of using a third party one. Uh, I think that, that's it. Um, yeah. What do you think about database sharding? Database sharding? It depends on what you're doing. Uh, you don't always have uh, the ability to do the database sharding or partition it properly. Um, in most cases that I deal with, it's usually better to have triple per data in the simpler tables and not separated uh, to sharding. Uh, everybody knows what sharding is. Well, I, I, I can't even understand the word. Huh? Shouting. 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 Now I hear the word, but uh, okay. what does it mean? Okay. It's having multiple databases and breaking your data up yeah, between yeah. them and uh, serving different requests from different databases? It's either, either a different request from different databases or you can split a single table between like, um, like you can separate it by IDs for example like in one server you save part of the data and another server such part of a different part of the data. I don't share what we like with just the ability to He's 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 talmud. The escalation. Talmud. He's talmud. Ah, he's talmud. He's talmud. He's talmud. He's talmud.
אני קצת מופתע פשוט מהמחמאה, אני לא עוסק בזה בעצמי, אבל המחמאה שנתת לי מוטיבדיה בסוף, כי בסך הכל זה משהו מאוד פשוט. זה בסך הכל שלושה דאטה סנטרים, שניים בארצות הברית ואחד באירופה. עדיין, אבל... שזה יותר טוב מכלום, אבל זה, זה לא אקמאי, אנחנו לא משתמשים באקמאי כי אנחנו משום מה נורא רוצים לעשות הכל בעצמנו. <אח> אני לא יודע למה זה לא בהכרח טוב. אבל אתה באמת חושב שזו דוגמה טובה? אני אשמח למסור את זה ל... אני חושב שזו דוגמה טובה בגלל שאם נסתכל על הטופ 10, כולם משתמשים במערכות הרבה הרבה יותר כבדות ולא מתמודדים עם אותה כמות רעה. אז ספציפית מדיה ווקי זו דוגמה מפרנת. גם לזה, גם מה שאמרנו מקודם בקשר לארכייבינג של מידע. שגם היסטורי ישן של ארטיקל נשמרת יותר בעזרת המחוקפת של ארכייב בצורה מאוד פשוטה כאילו גם דרך אגב גם זה שמדיה ווקי בגדול לא משתמש בשארדינג למרות הסקייל שלו זה גם מראה על היעילות של הסגן של ווקימדיה בעצם כמעט כל הרקווסטינג רוב הרקווסטים שבאים מיוזרים שהם לא לומדים, בעצם לא מגיעים בכלל לשרתים. זה חלקתו מאוד יעילה. אני אמסור את זה לחבר'ה. אני אשמח למסור את זה לחבר'ה. אני עובד שם במשהו אחר, לא בסקלביליטי. אני עשיתי כמה אופטימיזציות כאילו של פרפורמנס במדיה ווקי, כאילו יש כמה פיישים בפנים ספציפית על זה. והאמת שאני מאוד התרשמתי